to share with prospective students and families that our engineering students are supported and they have access to uh, some programs that will help them to be successful students. And just a couple of those, um, I'll start with Mesa, it's actually on the last page, but the uh, Mesa program does have educational or academic support. They run the tutoring program for our college. Um, I don't know how many engineering programs have, have that. Um, and then we also have, it's a fairly new, a peer advising center for engineering students. And I think a lot of students are, um, will open up more, ask questions but, um, uh, more openly, I guess, to other students rather than faculty. So while we do have faculty advisors, and they are available to every student at any level, um, in addition, we have the peer advising center. So that's going to help students to learn how to use the um, advising tools that we have available to us on campus, uh, keep them on track, um, and also to take advantage of our, our peer advisors who know very well to take advantage of study abroad programs, um, which we do have in engineering. It's not a requirement of the curriculum, but it is highly encouraged for students to study abroad. So students can take advantage of that and get engineering credit. Um, and then we also communicate with our students. We just try to keep in touch, but also provide. We get so many companies giving us internship opening um, information. Or um, I just had a group of students go to um, an event in Santa Monica hosted by BMW. So we're getting these kind of opportunities all the time. And I try to communicate and keep them updated and posted so that our students can take advantage. Um, so communication in engineering, I think, is important as well. Okay. In engineering, as with um, our colleges across the campus, we encourage our students to get involved. We have actually close to 30 engineering organizations um, alone. Uh, and that's, of course, you all know of what, 300 or so on campus. But in engineering specifically, we have about 30. And they are going to be available as uh, major-based or major-focused organizations or um, honor societies, as well as our special interests or our, our cultural groups. These are the ones that do a lot of the um, uh, outreach, a lot of the, for example, Engineers Without Borders, on the fourth page at the bottom, you'll see some of the work that they do, um, trying to bring clean water or projects like that to, um, in the past, I believe they've gone to Panama, Nicaragua, and I forgot what they're working on now. But um, So these are ways, in addition to research, that students can get involved. And I'm going to show you a video, if, assuming it works. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. I was going to point that in. It's going to work. So just to give you an idea of the kinds of things or the kinds of activities that the students can get involved in with these organizations. respect to machining, designing, and taking what you learn in your classes and applying it to the car. From the beginning of the year, we design and we actually get to build the car ourselves. And I think that's pretty impressive, being that we're not guided, there's no handbook on how to do it or how to design anything. And we all come together and we build a race car and we compete every year. When it comes down to it, it's a lot of hands-on work. And everybody's working. It's pretty much going to be has in here. Everybody's doing their own little part. I sort of grew up around the cars and mechanics, but I never actually had any experience myself. So once I found out about it, I really wanted to get involved and spend my last year here learning as much as I could. I've done a lot of welding before, but 
to make something that precise and doing the full signal of the chassis is an incredible amount of work. A lot of employers respect a Formula SAE and understand that there's a lot of hard work that goes on with that and I think I can use that to be able to translate that to the real job world. I learned how to use many of the machines in the machine shop. I honestly didn't even know what they looked like before I even got here. It's tough to really get the most out of all the engineering classes when you don't have the ability to see something up front and hold it in your hands. And so this really helped bring all the pieces together for me. You're getting in the grease, you're getting in the dirt, you're cutting the metal. It's just good practical knowledge for engineers. I've learned a lot this year. I've learned a lot of fabrication. I feel like I've jumped many steps forward within engineering because of this club. Anyone that's new can join. If you know nothing about cars, you will learn so much. We all come from different backgrounds, or some of us are not even the same majors, so getting together for one common thing that we share, I think, is pretty awesome. I'm super excited to see it start and that all of our work, all our joint effort actually made a difference. Being able to look at the car and say, I had a role in building that, you know, it's just, it's great. A lot of blood and sweat into it, so it's just awesome to see that result. I want to see everything that you've done work and, you know, just the feeling that something that made this happen. It's a year of hard work, design, and fabrication. And so when you see it come together and the car fires up for the first time, you're just like, wow, we made this. Pretty cool, right? I mean, what other college gets to build rockets and cars and underwater submarines and all that kind of stuff? Um, so again, that was just a, a, a quick example of what the clubs are doing. I think it's um, helpful, especially if you don't know what goes on in engineering, for you to see that and share that with potential prospective students and um, families. Um, lastly, I want to just bring your attention to this handout, which you could probably do better than the screen. Oh, it looks pretty good. Um, so this was taken directly off the um, analytical studies institutional research site. So it's public, so if parents ask, or I don't know if they get involved with parents or not, but if anybody asks, they can go find the information themselves. And I just wanted to bring your attention to a couple of things on this. Um, on the left, the blue bars, you'll see the trends in enrollment. And what I want to point out is over the last five years, since fall 12 to including this fall, Look how much the engineering enrollment has grown out. Granted, these are first-time <coughs> freshmen. Um, so this is a 73% increase just in the last five years, just in new students, in fact, just in new freshmen. Um, but that pretty much mirrors our overall enrollment, which actually has doubled in that same time frame. So engineering is fast growing, and um, we're trying our very best to meet the needs of all the students coming in. And the other thing I wanted to note are just some things about this group of incoming freshmen. So you can see their average incoming GPA, and a lot of people ask about this. Well, we can't guarantee anybody that if you get this, you'll get in. This just gives a kind of profile of a snapshot of this cohort coming in this fall. Um, and that's, I think, important to remember. Like, they want us to, you know, we get phone calls all the time and ask us the kind of information, and all we can do is point them to this site and say, this is going to give you a snapshot of the incoming class, where the average incoming GPA is 3.7. That hasn't really changed much over the last three years. An average SAT score, average ACT score, they can do the math and figure out that eligibility index. Um, and then, I'm not sure, but I get some of times asked this question to our students. Um, are taking incoming students taking an average of 15? I know the ambassadors that were with me in the summer know that um, I tell students just to be cautious, especially in the first semester, to, um, to be careful what the number of units they take. But it looks like they're taking about 15, which is what the campus meeting recommends. Uh, we have work to do in increasing our women uh, in our majors. Um, so this just gives you uh, some information about our incoming class. So I think that was my last, yes, um, slide. Are there any questions? Yes, you said that this, um, the last slide was available online. Do you have a specific engineering website? Or? So actually, no, it's a uh, good question. It's the analytic, analytical, so ASIR, 
asir.stsu.edu. It's the campus, not 